budgeting, it's definitely not anti-freedom. Everything but YOLO spending sprees. Money comes and goes, but I will never be 21 and traveling around China again. You already do not have money when your bank balance is zero. And you having access to a credit card or maybe other people's pockets does not change that fact. If you struggle with impulse spending, you most likely struggle with um, toning down your discomfort with quick dopamine fixes. You just learn to relate with people from other places early on. So nowadays you are a professional. Can you see? Everything's like different shades of brown. Yeah. <laughs> Did the cat come to post? Yeah. <laughs> Tonight I'll be flying to Spain for a business trip. I have time to clean around the house a little bit. It's not spotless, but good enough so that nothing starts smelling <laughs> while I'm away. It's less than a week anyways. All of my clothes have like a little bit of a um, not so fresh smell. I think maybe I took them out of the drying rack a bit too early and now, you know, there's that. But well, no can do now. My car is coming soon, so let me wrap up everything and let's fly. Hi everyone! I just got back last night from a business trip to Europe and uh, since I had access to different types of products than I do here, I used the opportunity to do a little bit more shopping than I would normally do. So I thought that in the series of productivity vlogs I would take you behind my thinking of budgeting, of my payday routine, what principles I have around money and also discuss some money spending related issues that I see people struggle with and I'll also share the behind the scenes of my work trip. I would like to say that by the age of 31 I do have some bits of <laughs> adulting figured out. There's of course still a lot to develop and as much as you should take this video just seeing how a normal woman deals with her finances, uh, I do live a pretty international life which means that I think and pay in two different currencies, the Kenyan shillings and euros. That makes some things a little bit more complex. So I track my spending each month in detail on a Google sheet. So I know in a lot of detail where my money goes. I can basically add here income. It creates here this left to spend graph, bills, savings. Then we have the expense tracker and the cool thing is that whatever I have added here it starts adding up here in my expenses and again updates all these graphs. And yeah, then at the end of the month I would see exactly did I spend more than I earned, which hopefully doesn't happen. And uh, if there is anything left, I can maybe add it to my savings. So yeah, this is what I do each month. Well, good morning. Um, I am not yet at that point in my life when I'm able to travel overnight and look graceful at the end. But we're not yet at the end. We're switching, transferring here in Paris, going to Barcelona. And uh, I did not remember that in, in Paris airport uh, all the announcements and texts and everything are in French, English and also in Chinese. And there was once an instance in Wuhan when I had to go to like a French hospital and everything was written in French and Chinese and back then I remember thinking like okay which one do I know better but now it's confirmed I know Chinese better because I can understand like all the announcements in Chinese but not quite everything in French. I arrived to the hotel about three hours ago and I've been napping, I've been showering. I would have been napping forever, you know, the trip 
from home to hotel took like 20 hours. I will now head to a cafe, have a very late lunch, it's maybe 5 p.m. I will bring my laptop, hopefully I will get some work done there. In fact, I was very efficient. That's the thing, like my energy comes and goes in like bursts and I think I get a lot done in a shorter time, but then I'm really done. <laughs> I'm starting to feel, you know, the flight and the laptop work in my neck. And I just kind of want to stretch out a little bit and then continue and hopefully I can get to bed early, wake up early, head to breakfast and then to my meetings. So many people have some resistance when it comes to budgeting, but let me tell you, budgeting it's definitely not anti-freedom, everything but. Because being on top of your finances really gives you that like peace of mind and security around your finances. At least you know if something's wrong, you know what is wrong, what is going on. And having things planned and pre-budgeted also gives you a chance to go on these YOLO spending sprees whenever there's a moment for that. We could consider my um, shopping in Europe this week one of those things because my principle is to live my everyday life kind of frugally so no crazy shopping nothing like that so when there is that moment that a friend asks me to go eat out with them i know that this has been budgeted for that i can go there definitely was a moment in my earlier 20s a bit this thinking that you see on social media money comes and goes but i will never be 21 and traveling around china again which is something that i did and i'm actually very happy that i did do those things and get those experiences but i do think think there could have been a little bit more financial planning from my end while I was doing that and I could have still maybe been able to do everything I wanted while also putting some money aside. Some people have a better result when they want to save or pay off their loans or invest when they gamify the process. Okay, let's say you cut off uh, take out coffee and everything you saved you put towards a specific savings goal or you could come up with a challenge for yourself. What are all the ways you could use to uh, earn maybe 100 extra bucks in the next month and it's also good to have an audit of your free time activities do you go shopping with your friends do you go for sundowners in expensive lounges like you see you could brainstorm a little bit what could be some other fun and cheaper activities like i don't know coloring some cute pictures or going out in the nature for a walk don't think that going out in the nature needs uh to mean buying expensive gear to do that nature doesn't ask that from us or you could start your own business <laughs> that means you will never be bored again i've done that and it might even earn you some money on the way hopefully and living where i live i know very well that there are some people who cannot cut from their spending because they already can't afford for the basic necessities but I think there is also a very large part of the population anywhere who are maybe more mismanaging what they have than being actually broke and who could benefit from maybe no spend or low spend activities challenges and while I have some disposable income that I can use I still need to prioritize and it does come down to priorities so I spend quite a lot on food for example because eating well is something that I don't want to compromise but there are still so many things I could do I could look up affordable healthy meals online I could uh, plan my meals better, meal prep better, and also not go to the store hungry <laughs> and, you know, just get everything I crave at that moment. Also something that I could maybe do a little bit more often is to really empty my pantry before I go buy anything new. That means being maybe a little bit more creative with your recipes. And for avoiding eating outside, different things have worked for me in different times. Sometimes I've really been into just optimizing the shit out of everything, planning and prepping everything into these tidy boxes. And sometimes it's been more about self-care, knowing that I am uh, cooking a nourishing meal for myself, taking care of myself, loving myself through food and nutrition. And anyways, if I know that I'm going out, I normally just eat prior to going and since I don't drink alcohol I usually just take like sparkling water and maybe a small snack so that's a way for me to save.
was a long day. Can't believe that this is how my life was like pretty much every day some years ago. I forgot to say at the airport in Nairobi, I was so like touched because I saw, I assumed they were British teenagers and then Kenyan teenagers were like getting to know each other, exchanging ideas and experiences. I heard that Finnish university students are not doing exchange years or exchange periods as much as they used to because the financial situation has gotten worse for many and there's a lot more pressure to graduate. I know that in many countries and in many universities there's not even that many opportunities. Kids and students they don't really have a chance to go abroad for exchange or have like a chance to interact with foreign youth and I just feel like it's such a special experience that I had going for exchange in my university years and I also did a language course in Ireland when I was like 15. It's just such an important experience in learning to have this common sense of humanity, especially if your countries have some bad history together. You just learn to relate with people from other places early on. Because now for the first time in my life I'm really experiencing a lot of stereotyping and prejudice and whatnot, different kinds of attitudes based on the way I look and where people think I'm from. It really feels bad because I've grown up respecting other backgrounds and places and ways and you know histories. I guess I would just wish to see more young people having that opportunity. Good morning. I definitely needed more sleep, but I'll oh, yeah. head to the office now. And uh, tonight we do not have a common dinner, so I'll just come here to the hotel and work on a couple of my own things and hopefully get to sleep early. I've been looking to repurchase this hoodie from Uniqlo for years already. I had this back in China in like 2015 in another color and it was one of my favorite items for a very long time. So I got rid of it but all these years I've just been looking to repurchase this and last time I was here tried to look for it but it wasn't the season, they weren't selling these. But now they did so I finally got this. I just want to have these and listen to podcasts and uh, text my babe and then go to sleep. I was hoping to work on some stuff tonight, but it's not urgent and I need sleep more. So something I did years ago was to automate my recurring expenses to go away from my bank account the day I get paid. Let's say loan, payments, rent or savings and investments. And this part of uh, setting savings and expenses to kind of resemble a recurring bill is called uh, pay yourself first, PYF. And that's just to ensure that if you are the type that spends whatever is on the bank account, you won't be able to because this forces you to put something aside for your future self. So a few principles that I live by. You already do not have money when your bank balance is zero and you having access to a credit card or maybe other people's pockets does not change that fact. I use a credit card, so I paid off every time before the billing period ends. I also always try to have one month of living expenses quickly at hand 
because we never know if our next salary is going to come so that means spending your january income in february instead of spending it in january or even spending your february income in january which you do not yet have and when this is in check i would start building a buffer account which should have let's say at least three months of living expenses you can grow it bigger if you'd like and this is for any unforeseen circumstances let's say if you have a car you your car breaks down or you know something happens or you are made redundant from your job that means that should these unforeseen circumstances happen you do not need to resort to uh, high interest credit and if your buffer starts to grow beyond what seems reasonable i would consider putting all that extra money to a um, high interest savings account that better enables the money to retain its value when you compare it to normal bank accounts that normally the money gets eaten by inflation. I really want my iced latte. I'm gonna start 75 soft on uh, Monday. So I just want my last iced latte before the challenge starts because I'm gonna, instead of no alcohol, because I don't drink alcohol already, I wanna do um, no coffee video. <laughs> the response here was really interesting. Like, I asked, like, hey, do you make iced lattes? Like, my coffee is hot. Like, she sounded so proud. Like, my coffee is hot. not feeling fresh at all we'll try to fix it with an everything shower soon uh, I didn't have any food in the house I will get my groceries delivered later but that's why I had the Java order so I think in Europe by law shops need to provide the customer a receipt of the purchase <laughs> And I think I experienced the famous Parisian attitude yesterday because it was in a big chain in the Paris airport. Uh, and I had to fight for a freaking receipt. The lady who of course only spoke French to me just refused to give me a receipt. And I'm like, I'm a business traveler. <laughs> it's not like some tax avoiding little shop on a like corner somewhere in Paris, like we're at the international airport. I went to a Korean cosmetic store, a Centella Soothing Sun Essence. This is mostly for those days when I'm not wearing makeup because I have a sunscreen that leaves that, you know, white film. And then I also have ones that are like uh, CC BB creams and a sunscreen at the same time. And I also got a new one like that. This brand is Bar and this is Claire's. And then I got this Laka, uh, what is it, lip balm. And then, okay, so I went to Tiger because I wanted to have that, you know, headband that you use when you do your skincare and makeup and whatever. But they did not have those things. Tiger of all places. It's a little bit like Miniso. But instead, oh my gosh, these make me so happy. These are highlighters that look like lipstick, I think. So there's all these beautiful beautiful colors i'm a sucker for stationery if you can't tell 
I also got these stickers. Ah, so cute. I got these pens in all these colors. I'm thinking to use this for maybe bigger projects or things that I procrastinate on. It's 100 things and you essentially have these pages where you write the thing you want to do. What is it? Why do you want to do it? How do you want to do it? When? And then if you did it or you tried or you changed your mind, especially if you use it for like one project, doing 100 things gets you pretty far. And I already have this weekly planner that you've seen many times and I still love it. But again, for like a certain type of project, I got myself another weekly planner. So that is a lot bigger budget for shopping that I normally have per month. Um, but yeah, I think for now I will not need to buy that many things for a while. And I do need to use the opportunity when I go to Europe to get my hands on things like Korean cosmetics because I mean they do have like skincare here but whenever it goes more to makeup things <laughs> using my feet to get this up yeah I mean they don't have that many things here I assume because the color range with the Asian cosmetics doesn't really suit Africa I mean their color ranges are not known for being very inclusive so yeah but for me, normally they work. And I also got this a book from perhaps my favorite YouTuber, Alicia Gogan. She also has a podcast called The Glow Up Secrets. It's lovely. I read almost everything in the plane, but this also has a lot of uh, journaling prompts. So that's something I haven't done yet. And uh, Alicia, she speaks a lot about how to glow up not only externally, but also internally, how to kind of process your trauma, how to learn to self-soothe in ways that are healthy and not self-sabotaging the what we want in life, the kind of goals we have, and how to learn to reparent yourself. And uh, it's, it's really nice. I would definitely recommend this book, especially for younger girls and she even says that she wrote this basically with her younger self in mind because when we are young we don't have a lot of the tools we need to actually get towards the best version of ourselves and i can definitely say that i wish i would have had something like this at hand when i was younger but i have it now and i am very committed to spreading the gospel <laughs> I'm a firm believer that planning ahead is a gift that you can give yourself also when it comes to finances and this could mean everyday things like check the weather before you leave the house so that you can carry an umbrella instead of always buying a new one from the street when it starts raining or if you know that between running errands you won't have time to come back home to cook and have a meal let's pack a snack. Even with your wardrobe, if you're planning to buy something new, think is this filling a need or do I already have something very similar? Also think what type of clothes do you realistically need? <laughs> like how do you spend your days? Does the item fit what I already have in my wardrobe or does buying this in fact create a need for me to buy matching shoes, matching top, like you see what I mean. If you struggle with impulse spending, you most likely struggle with um, toning down your discomfort with quick dopamine fixes. And I've certainly had this with coffee, so I would spend on takeout coffee and you know, coffee in itself is something that can create that but I think what you can do is to make a shopping list and just never buy anything outside of that shopping list until you've assessed whether an item should be part of the shopping list. Let it sit for a while, maybe check the best uh, quality price ratio for the product or service you want and specifically save for it. And don't fall into these pay later options. Remember what I said, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. I understand that some things need to be financed, you know, if you buy a house or a car or maybe an expensive piece of technology, I get that. But, you know, people use these things way too much for things that they really can't afford. I've also seen a lot of ads on the streets in Nairobi that encourage, you know, before holidays, like they they really try to get you, like feeling guilty if you can't provide nice things for your family. But 
get a bit creative not everything nice needs money something that i also did if i noticed that there was a regular purchase that i felt was eating too much of my money i would uh, replace it with a more long-lasting alternative there are actually quite many items that if you just buy a more good quality version you don't have to replace that thing so often and you likely also save the environment in the process and you might say like oh i need to treat myself maybe even people tell you to treat yourself and yeah you should but you know budget it <laughs> and then you can treat yourself with that pre-planned amount and never feel like it's taking you to a financial rut you don't need to feel guilt around treating yourself with the money that you have earned when you do it within the constraints of being able to pay for your life and putting something aside for the future as well i have a new cost of living video in nairobi coming because my expenses have actually went up since i got a better paying job and i have a bunch of money related videos either already up or up and coming so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those and check the description for those that are already there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!